Welcome to FT Markets. It's been another frantic day in the markets uh, for oil, oil plunging to uh, multi-year lows. Uh, we've got Neil Hume here to talk to us about it. Neil, wh what's going on today? Well, today, as you can probably see from the chart that's, that's going to come up in a second, we've seen another sort of gut-wrenching sell-off just when we thought the price had stabilised. We, we got down to a price on Brent of sort of around about 85, but it's come off again today. Uh, pretty much the same thing has actually happened in WTI. As you can see, it's stabilised and has come off again. Now, the sort of proximate cause for today is uh, is an announcement that actually came out late last night from mm -hmm. Saudi Aramco, which is the marketing arm of, of Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. uh, talking about um, cutting oil, cutting their prices for oil, sending into the US mm -hmm. in December. Right. Now, the market's been getting itself into a tiz about these Saudi Saudi moves for months now, right. but it's interpreted the latest move as the start of a price war. Right. The Saudis taking, uh, you know, taking the fight to the US shale producers and saying, right, we're going to cut our prices and make it more competitive against you guys. And the market's obviously reacted to that quite badly. Mm. Um, but that's just one interpretation. And the more you look at it, you've actually just, what we've actually been seeing is really the Saudis have just cut prices to make sure their oil is competitive with all the other grades that are going into the US. Mm. And, in and fact, it's a lower quality crude, right? So it trades yeah. at a, di a different uh, discount, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it will do. I mean, I mean, so as you can see there, I mean, so the, the heavy stuff trades at a big discount, the extra light stuff is, is at a premium. But um, I mean, it's important to emphasize as well, the US isn't particularly a big market for Saudi Arabia anymore. Mm. I think 20% of its exports go in there compared mm. to 70% from Asia. Right. So quite why the market's so spooked by uh, by this move, which is really just to make sure they're competitive and to keep, you know, the level of export to, you know, whatever they've been for the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I think it speaks more broadly of a skittish market, really. We've got an OPEC meeting coming up later yeah. this month. Mm -hmm. The market clearly would like to see some sort of production cut because we've seen, you know, several months now of rising supplies, sort of faltering demand growth, and that sort of crunched the price. So we're looking forward to that meeting in Vienna. Mm -hmm. And we're uh, looking at the behavior of the Saudis, right? Because you were telling me earlier, in May, they, they were pretty perfunctory. Well, they? I mean, yeah, uh, you know, at, at the last meeting in May, as you say, the Saudis were pretty much uh, their oil minister turned up on the morning of the meeting and then left a couple of hours later, really, mm -hmm. without barely uttering a word to uh, you know, any, any of the journalists uh, who were there. So, yes, it sort of hinges on what they may or may not do this month. Uh, most of the commentators that we talked to are saying, don't expect to cut, don't expect OPEC to do anything. Mm -hmm. They've seen prices above 100 and seen how that's incentivized supply around the world, so they're just going to let the price go. But interestingly today, there's been some comments from some of the world's biggest oil traders, guys like Ian Taylor at VTOL Ooh. and Marco Denand at Mercurio, and they're saying the market is actually probably a bit too pessimistic and OPEC might actually agree something uh, this month. Okay, it's probably a 50-50 chance, according to Mr. Denan, of a, of a sort of a 500,000 barrel a day cut from OPEC, but he sees it as a real possibility that you know they're actually going to be spooked by this price and actually react and do something. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've had a very sharp drop. So if these traders are talking about potential good news, it, it sounds as though the market's getting a little oversold. It certainly seems that way. I mean, I think there's a lot of short positions out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what we've seen today with some of the fall is some of the banks that have written put options for clients have been trying to desperately hedge themselves, and that's sort of gone into a, a spiral almost of more selling that gets more selling and the price has gone down. But certainly, and if we were to get an OPEC cut, I think, yeah, I mean, we could see you know, a, quite a big snapback in the WTI price and the price of Brent as well. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, thanks very much. It's, it looks like it's going to be a, a tricky time at the OPEC meeting. And Markets are a little bit fragile with the dollar rising, but uh, we look forward to seeing what happens. Thanks, Neil.